Eddie, what is your patriotism? First cup of coffee, sugar, but second time. Oh, no, no. <laughs> sugar. That reminds me. Number, please. My number is prospect 7119. What's yours? Oh, it's you again. Nobody else. This is Delaney's little boy, Eddie. And one of your devoted fans. Billy, he's going good tonight. Why, mister, I don't know what to say. Have I really got the voice with a smile? Yes, ma'am. You've got the voice with a kiss. A very pretty speech, mister. Say, look, I'm supposed to play a record for you. Okay, you pick it out. Anything at all. As long as it's Irish. You there. I'm looking for a fugitive. Huh? I'll give you a description. He's a young fellow about six foot tall, wearing a brown suit and a stolen necktie. He has a fast line of foolish talk and a thirst for strong drink. Read copper. <laughs> there now. Well, is your dad still the better man or isn't he, huh? Purely accidental, Pop. My foot slipped. <laughs> <laughs> Sit down, sir. A job at George and keep your thumb on it. Well, tell me. What are you doing in this part of town here? You don't mean to say that you finally got a case. Have I got a case? <laughs> well, come on, come on. What's on your mind? Are you going to tell me now, or do I have to take you over my knee, eh? <coughs> but get ready for a surprise. Nothing you could do would surprise me. A little more respect, if you please. You happen to be looking at a lieutenant. What? Did they really let you in? Meet First Lieutenant Edward Delaney, United States Army. I got the official letter this morning giving me three days to pack up my duds and kiss the girls goodbye. Well, well. Is it the proud father I am today? <laughs> you know, I hope the army locks some sense in that head of yours. Though I can't see what possible use they'd have for a third-rate private detective. Is that so? <laughs> well, they want me to take charge of something called G2. That happens to be army intelligence, in case you don't know. G2? <laughs> They'll have you doing KP inside of a week. <laughs> Oh, I say, Dad, uh, have you got a nickel? Yeah, sure I have. Because I don't waste mine in jukeboxes. You know, if you've got such a case on that young girl's voice, why don't you get up gumption enough to meet her, huh? Uh -uh, too much risk. I fell in love with a long-distance operator once. She turned out to be a retired lady wrestler. <laughs> <laughs> That's good. <laughs> well, i got to be getting back to work. See that you get home early now. So long, Dad. Nice going, boys. Have any trouble? Nah, I was just saying, so I'm taking candy away from a baby. Now, you never knew any babies, huh? They sometimes can put up quite a squawk. So did these guys when we hijacked them. Put a little technique, nothing too rough. Well, just like the old days, Marty. Come on. It's a copper. I thought that was taken care of. It was, Marty, honest. He's down the other end of the beat. This must be the Sarge. Let me do the talking. What's going on here? Oh, just a little business transaction, officer. I'm thinking of buying this old warehouse. Any objection? I thought you'd retired from business, Mr. Marty Clark. You know, I think I'll take a look at it. Any objections? Keeping them. Those trucks should have been here an hour ago. Maybe the boys stopped for a cup of coffee. A quick one, Mr. Underwood. Uh, those drivers aren't that stupid. 
They wouldn't stop anywhere. Not with the kind of a load they're hauling. You want me to call the other warehouse again? You better, yes. What happened? I don't know, mister. I picked up these guys sneaked out of a drugstore. They said you'd pay the fare to $1.65. Hey, off. Well? One minute we was driving along. Yeah, yeah. come on, come on. Can't remember. These men better get to a hospital. Take care of them, Joe. Well, I'm telling you, that's what happened. Yes, trucks and all. A fine partner you are. I took you in so we'd have some protection, and now the robber's gone. Listen, you must have ways of finding out. Unless... Unless you already know what happened. This couldn't be the double cross, could it? Or could it? All right. How can I report the trucks missing? I'd have federal men checking on me in an hour. Remember, it's a federal offense to move tires, even your own tires, after they're frozen. Okay, see what you can do about it. Two truck drivers get slugged and then disappear? Call me back, then. Okay. Well, Bill? Now, take it easy, Eddie. I know everything you're gonna say before you start. We don't like cop killers. And nobody's gonna get away with that stuff in this town. Well, have you got a lead, anything at all? Well, it's a little early yet. Just as a matter of routine, we rounded up about a half a dozen of the bad boys last night and gave them a going over. No, nope, so far, no dice. Nothing else? Yes, there's one other thing. I received a report last night that two truck drivers were slugged. I don't know how it all fits in, but after getting first aid at the drugstore, they beat her before the ambulance arrived. That sounds like the old days, 18th Amendment. These gang wars are tough. You see, Eddie, nobody had a grudge against your old man. He must have walked into something. Yeah, and when I get hold of the guy he walked into... Now, don't get hot-headed and start taking things into your own hands. Okay, okay, but I'm not gonna sit still. Naturally. But maybe a private dick like you could uncover a lot of things that we wouldn't get. Now, let's work together on it, huh? Okay. Oh, wait a minute. These are the things from your dad's locker. I thought maybe you'd like to have them. Thanks, Bill. Come in, Lieutenant, or is it Captain by now? Sit down. Thanks. Business pretty quiet, huh, Marty? Oh, it's been nice and quiet until now. Ever read the papers? Oh, just the funnies. I'm crazy about Superman. Did you see him last week? There was a killing down on Front Street last night. What's that got to do with me? When they repealed the 18th Amendment, I went legit. You know that. Sure, I know it. You can't help it if some of the bad boys still hang out in your cafe, can you? Go on. What's the beef? Another thing happened. Two guys were beaten up and didn't wait for the ambulance or the police follow up. Now, they wouldn't be friends of yours, would they? Of course not. You don't know where they might be hiding out. Uh -huh. Who's supposed to be a safe doc in town now? I wouldn't know. Look, I'm running a nice respectable business here, and I don't expect to be pushed around. What was pushing? All I want to do is have a nice little talk with the two guys who were beaten up, that's all. We'll pick them up someday. But in the meantime, Marty, if you're here, Oh, you? sure, sure. Being legit, I don't mind giving the law an order a tip when I know anything. Only I, uh, I don't right now. Okay. Come inside, boys. Delaney, you keep strange office hours. Well, the uh, joint's about closed up. So I see, so I see. My name is Underwood of John J. Underwood Distributors. Well, it's nice meeting you. Now, if you'll excuse me, I've Mr. Got... Delaney, I've come to you on a very important matter. Important to you or to me? Well, to me mostly, but possibly also to you. Your name has been suggested to me as a private detective who uh, knows his way around. I could probably find out who shot Lincoln. Uh, look, Mr. Underwood, I've only got two days before I'm due to put on a uniform, well, and I... two days might be time enough. The 
Job I have in mind will pay, well, say, a thousand dollars. Why that kind of money? I have my reasons. This particular job is extremely confidential. Uh, so what? That's for the police. Uh, yes, perhaps. Well, I would like to put a private investigator on it, you understand? You see, last night somebody slugged two of my drivers and stole the trucks. What was in the load? Load? Oh, the trucks were empty. All I want you to do is to find out who was behind the job. It's possible that I'm facing some sort of a trade war. You see, my competitor... Now, if this were 1930 and you were in the Alki racket... I'm in the warehouse and trucking business. Sometimes I buy and sell job lots of furniture, automobile supplies and so forth. Will you take the case? I might. Because there's just a chance that this case might have something to do with another one I'm working on. Save it, Mr. Underwood. All I want is a chance to talk to those two drivers. Where are they? They're in a little private hospital on Mound Street. I thought it best to keep them under cover. Okay. I'll take a run up there. Tip them off, I'm coming. Just mention my name. After hours, what do you want? You got a couple of patients here. Mr. Underwood sent me. Yes, those two drivers. They're not allowed to have any visitors. Hey, look here, this is important. I... trying anyway. Wait a minute. Something else just struck me. How would you like to meet me at Monty Spot Cafe out in West River Street? Anything you say. Well, this is a lead that might blow the whole thing wide open. Meet you outside the place in half an hour. Right. Hi. Oh, hi, you, Bill. I don't know why I let you in on all these things, Eddie, when you hold out on me. But here it is. Those two truck drivers were bumped off less than an hour after I was in this joint asking some questions of Marty Clark. He runs it. See, is that the Marty Clark that used to be in the booze racket years ago? Did very well at it, too. When Prohibition came along, Marty was in the clear. You see, he was one gangster who kept his income tax paid up. Well, all right, what's that got to do with me? Well, it just struck me that everything about this whole affair, the shooting of your old man and all that, is right off the front pages of 10 years ago. Hoodlum stuff. The kind of thing Marty used to be very good at. Yeah, but listen here, you... Hey, wait a minute. I, I've seen that heat before. Come on. That's the car that was parked outside the hospital. That's not the number. Yeah, they changed the plates. They couldn't change those. Now, well, what more do you want? It was Marty Clark, all right. I wouldn't be surprised if those holes didn't come from my old man's gun. Looks like you're right. Yeah. Now, wait a minute. This is no time playing here or go busting in that joint. The place is full of hoodlums. Besides, dealing with a guy like Clark, you need a warrant. Otherwise, he'd be out on a writ. Now, I'll run down to City Hall and get one and be back in an hour. Yeah, but suppose he's got connections downtown. Somebody might tip him off. You're right. If he doesn't know you, why don't you go inside and keep an eye on him until I get back with the boys? Yeah, right. Now, remember, you're just watching him. I know how you feel, but don't take the law into your own hands. You get it? Sure. Sure, I get it. 
Out of curiosity, could you point out Marty Clark to me? He's not around right now, but that's his table in the corner. The one where little Miss Muffet's sitting. Where'd you telephone? Hey, where's the phone? Over there. Thanks. I want to talk to Mr. Underwood, Mr. John Underwood. Hello, this is Eddie Delaney speaking. Yes? I've got that information you wanted. Does that offer of a thousand bucks retainer still hold? Uh, why, why, yes, yes, Delaney. You wanted the name of the man behind the hijacking of your trucks. The empty ones you told me about. It's the same guy that engineered what happened to your drivers this afternoon. Yes, yes. The name is Clark. Marty Clark. Operates the one spot cafe on West River Street. Marty Clark? That's right. And that cleans us up, Mr. Underwood. I'd like a check in the mail tomorrow. Marty Clark. Ain't you made a mistake? Now, don't get any ideas. You take what I hand over, see? If you don't like this payoff, maybe I'll have to get myself a couple of other boys. Hold it. Maybe we could work for somebody else. Maybe we had an offer recently. Yeah, maybe Mr. Marty Clark has forgot we was witness to the shooting of a cop the other night. Witness? You were accessories before, during, and after the fact. You can't talk, you can't quit, you can't get out of this until I say so. And I'm not gonna say so. Now take the dough, that's all you get. Okay, Marty. That's the way you want it to be? Mm-hmm. Yeah, that's the way I want it to be. What'll it be, boys? Same as usual? Yeah, make it double. Off the table. Okay, Dizzy. Until I get an orchestra lined up, you just hang around here and mix with the customers. But remember, you're my girl. How does that sound? Sounds wonderful. Here you are, mister. Is that Marty Clark over there? Yes, sir. That's Marty Clark in person. In person, huh? Come on, let's dance. I want to show you off. Down here. I think you said on the phone that our association was ended. I told you you'd have your check in the mail tomorrow. Your check's no good to me unless you're alive to sign it. Marty Clark's bad medicine. Oh, customers. I'll be right back. Table for two. I'm alone. Thank you. Are you Marty Clark? I am. Could I have a few minutes of your time? Well, this is a busy night. My card. Jay Underwood, huh? Have you a place we can talk a little more privately? I said I was busy. This is a matter of business, very important business, in regard to some auto tires. Well, I'll try and come back later, but I don't think you and I have any business to talk over, Mr. Underwood. Have a drink on the house. Hello there. We ought to know each other if you're going to be around. I'm Bonnie. Oh, yes, you're the, uh, check room girl. That's right, and you, you're Marty's new dish. I don't know what business that is of yours. Later on, after Marty gets an orchestra, you're going to play the accordion or sing or do card tricks. Meanwhile, you'll mix with the customers. <laughs> 
That's Marty's routine. His work so often, he never has to change it. Why, honey, I was getting lonesome for you. Oh, why all the chill? You're not sore just because I left you alone for a few minutes, are you? <laughs> Come on, what you need is another dance. Number, please, office. Yes, we have a direct wire to about 37 night spots in town. Oh, yes, certainly, right away. <coughs> Billy, it's a blackout. Something's gone wrong with the air raid sirens, and they want us to notify everybody. A blackout? Oh. Oh! Blackout, everybody. Turn off the lights. There's a blackout. Yes, they ask us to notify. Well, there's a blackout. blackout. Attention, please turn your lights out. What? What do you mean? The chief warden just called me. It's a blackout, everybody. It's a blackout. It's a blackout. Well, don't, don't get excited. Take it easy, folks. There's nothing to get excited about. You're safer here than you are out in the street. Now, just take your seats and stay calm. Oh, Louie, get those lights off. Okay, Marty. Hello, sister. You listening? Yes. Keep this thing grinding. Okay, here they come. Come on, baby, let's start them dancing. What is this? What's the matter with you? I guess it's just that I'm allergic to wolves. Some lights? Stand back, everybody. Don't touch it. Help! Police! Hey, Herman! Herman! There's no blackout. Turn down those lights. You took your time about getting here. What's going on down at the station? A pinochle game? Sorry, Lieutenant. We were held up. Somebody turned in a phony air raid alarm. Help! Police! Come on. Somebody shot the boss. All right, folks. Bring it up, bring it up. Come on. Come on, stand back, everybody. All go back to your tables. Riley, you watch the door. Three holes through his chest. You did a pretty good job, Delaney. Cut it out. That isn't funny. All right, I'm waiting. What happened? Well, somebody said there was a blackout. Yeah, it was a girl on a jukebox. You know, the voice with the smile. All the lights were turned out. Marty told everybody to take it easy, then started dancing with that girl over there. They had some kind of an argument and stopped dancing. She walked off the floor and left him. Somebody let him have it. Hey, wait a minute. Are you talking about me? We didn't have any argument. I was just tired of dancing, that's all. And I'm tired of hanging around here. All right, if you're not tired, sister, sit down. Check on that jukebox angle later. See if the girl was in on it. But Linda wasn't. She couldn't. Linda wasn't. She couldn't. So that's her name, is it? Now, look, Eddie, I'm not saying I blame you for this, but in the eyes of the Lord, it's still murder. I warned you before you came in here not to take the law in your own hands. I'm telling you again, I didn't rub him out. I was just an innocent bystander. Hey, Lieutenant, look at what I found. Now, we're getting somewhere. Check on this at headquarters. It's an S&W 6-34-3000. You don't have to check on it, Bill. That's my old man's gun. I'd like to thank the guy that shot Marty Clark with it. That's the way it should be. Don't give me that stuff. You're the only one who'd have your old man's gun. Why me? Because it was turned over to you along with the rest of that stuff, and you know it. I never opened that bundle you gave me. I don't see how. You better make it good. That bundle of my father's stuff is still in my office. Nobody could have got hold of it. Excuse me, Lieutenant. Uh, how much longer are you going to keep us here? Can't you just make the arrest and get it over with? I think you're right about that, mister. You can all go now, but leave your name and address at the door. All right, folks, come on, let's go, let's go. Come on. You're under arrest, Eddie. Are you out of your head? Anybody here could have done it. Come on, Eddie. I hate to do this. I don't try anything funny. Use some sense, Eddie. This won't get you anywhere.
Radio room? This is Lieutenant Decker, Detective Division. I want you to send out a general broadcast. Wanted for homicide. Edward Delaney. Height, six feet. Weighs about 160 pounds. How could I have been in on it? I haven't even met this Delaney. Have I, Billy? Sure. I mean, no. But he knows you. Only over the wire. On this kind of a job, you get to know people just by their voices. Sometimes we amuse ourselves by trying to figure out what kind of a person goes with a voice. Then you're willing to swear it wasn't Delaney that called you and ordered that phony blackout? Of course. It was an entirely different kind of voice. Well, you'd know it if you heard it again. I most certainly would. Okay, you can go back to your work. But remember, you're a material witness to this thing. You seem to be in the clear. We're keeping our eye on you, so don't try and leave town. Those cops can make you feel guilty just by looking at you. You lend a ward? Why, I don't know. Uh, no. Of course. Cut it out. This is official. All right, sister. What was that routine about a blackout? You want to talk or do you want to come down to headquarters with me? Come on, come on. What about it? Well, gee, mister, I... Wow! You sure gave him a bop of the gook. But he's wanted for murder, isn't he? Oh. All right, Mr. Delaney, stand up and no tricks. Linda, shall I call the cops? Linda? So you're Linda. The voice with a kiss. Say, you know, you got the face to go with it, too. Hey, did you bop me with this? I'm holding you for the police. Billy? Oh, come on, come on. I had nothing to do with that murder. But if I don't find out who did, I'm cooked. The policeman says they have a perfect case against you, and they seem to think we were accomplices. Oh, now, if you I just... guess this will prove we're not if we turn you over to them. Maybe there's a reward. Okay. Okay. Here's your lunch. Oh. Cut it out, will you, darling? Now, look. You're in this just as much as I am. Somebody used you to set that blackout, and they're trying to use me for a patsy. Gosh, I don't want to get mixed up in anything like this. Which are mixed up in it. The cops will probably come here again. Don't say anything about recognizing that voice. But I've already told the police. Oh. Well, don't say any more about it. If that killer finds out you'd recognize his voice, you'll really be on the spot. Oh, Eddie, what am I going to do? There, there, dream girl. Just sit tight and trust Eddie. Where's the phone? It's in there, Mr. Delaney. Yes, yes. Mr. Underwood, this is Eddie Delaney. Delaney, where are you? How soon can you get out here? 20 minutes, why? Listen, Delaney, I, I'd like to hire you to protect me as a, as a sort of a bodyguard. Bodyguard, eh? Well, I'm a little hot to appear in public just now, but I'd like to hear what you have to say. Be there in 20 minutes. Here goes for solving the quickest case of my career. See you later. I'll say this for him. He's different. And how he's different. Mr. Underwood? Hey, Mr. Underwood. John Underwood speaking. Oh, Mr. Underwood, you don't know me, but this is Bonnie, the hat check girl at the spot. Yes? Listen, Mr. Underwood, I know who killed Marty Clark. I gotta get out of town, I need a couple of hundred dollars. My dear young lady, you'll have to be more definite than that. Listen to me. You don't know what a spot you're in. Where are you? Look, 
can I call you back? Well, can't I come to your place and talk to you? Well, it's a little crowded right now. I didn't touch a thing. I called you immediately. Never mind that now. Go on, search the house, boys. Riley, you come with me. There he is. Hello? Who is this? You know who this is, Mr. Underwood. Are you stalling me? This is the police. She was talking to somebody. Somebody in here. I'll call the coroner. You look around the garden. Well, good night, honey. Sure you'll be all right? Yes, I guess so. Sure. I wish I could stay with you. But you know, Ma, she'd be sure I was up to something. Never mind. Thanks, Billy. Good night. Good night. You gotta pack your things and get out of town tonight. This is no gag. I mean what I say. Get out of town and stay out. Your voice. You're the one who. Oh, you had to remember my voice, huh? Well, that makes it something else again. Linda, are you home? It wasn't a nightmare, was it? There was a man. There was no nightmare. There are marks where he jimmied the window. And I thought you were the killer. Well, never mind what you thought. We're both in the same boat now. You and I are the two people the killer's got to worry about. That means we've got to get him before he gets us. Look at you. What happened? Oh, I walked into a little trouble at Underwoods. He's dead. But I got a tip that may help. Oh, Eddie, I'm scared. Don't be scared, honey. I'll practice my guard duty for you tonight. <sighs> hey, uh, have you got a cup of coffee on you? Oh, sure, I'll get it right away. Morning. You'll make a wonderful guard when you get in the army. <sighs> Must have dozed off. You dozed for about nine hours. It's almost one o'clock in the afternoon. <sighs> hey, where'd these come from? Oh, I took the key out of your pocket, got the address from your driver's license, and went to your place and got them. I'm sort of a Girl Scout at heart. Say, by the way, how did you find this place? <sighs> well, that's a fine question to ask a detective. Phone book. Ah, thanks, Beam Girl. Bad enough to be a fugitive without 
Looking like a tramp. Oh, another thing. There was somebody at your apartment. Oh, you mean the police? No. Don't tell me you found a dead body in my apartment. Not very dead. It was a blonde. A blonde? <laughs> Maybe she was from the draft board. She'd been waiting for you all night. When I came to get your clothes, she left without saying anything. Wait a minute. That must be Bonnie, the check room girl at the spot. She called up Underwood and tried to make a deal. She knows something and she's trying to peddle it. I've got to get hold of her. Just relax. You're not going anywhere till you change your clothes and have some breakfast. You can dress in there. Bacon and eggs in ten minutes. Okay, dream girl. You're the boss. Can I make a phone call first? Sure. Hello, is this the Spot Cafe? This is the records room, police headquarters. One of your employees gave us an incomplete address last night. The name is Bonnie Bascom. It's the cops. That's where she lives. The Crescent Apartments on Hastings Drive. The phone number is Beechwood 2121. Okay, thanks. You said thanks. Then it's no cop. That's right. Say, who'd want Bonnie's address anyway? I don't like this. And what's more, our new boss ain't gonna like this. I think I'll just let him know. And now for little Bonnie. I'm going with you. Wait a minute. Somebody might be watching her apartment. I'll make a phone call first. Yes? Hello, this is Eddie Delaney speaking. Can you talk? Can I talk? I've been trying to find you for hours. Mr. Delaney, would it be worth $200 to you to know who killed Marty Clark? The answer is yes. Well, don't come here. I'm being watched. But I'll try to get away. Meet me on L near the library in 15 minutes. 15 minutes. Well, it's all fixed if you had $200. You flatter me, mister. <laughs> Never mind. She'll have to take a check. You wait right here and keep your door locked. Hey, wait a minute. I'm not waiting anywhere. Eddie Delaney, you can't go driving around the street in broad daylight. There's a general alarm out for you. Well, I'll have to take that chance. You're taking enough chances as it is. Come on, I have an idea. Women drivers. If you want to be a backseat driver, get in the back seat. Keep your head down. There's a traffic cop on this corner. There she is. Hello, Bonnie. says we're supposed to report a dead body to the police. They'll find it soon enough. Gosh, the way she fell forward. I know one thing. You're leaving town right now. I'm getting off here. Keep on driving straight ahead. Oh, but Eddie... That killer's out to mow down anybody who gets in his way. You've had your warning. All right. But will you kiss me goodbye? That's all I wanted to know. I'm not going anywhere without you. Oh, but look, honey... Are you coming with me? You know I can't. All right, then turn yourself over to the police. It won't take them long to find out you haven't killed anybody. Maybe. But don't forget, I've got a commission in the Army. Uncle Sam won't take me if I'm up to my neck in a murder. Murder? Three murders. Then you just have to break the case in spite of everything. And I'm sticking until you do. What's next on the program? Well... I was thinking about the only lead left for me, uh, for us, is to work over those boys at Marty Clark's. Eddie Delaney, sometimes I wonder which one of us is the detective. You might as well walk into police headquarters as into the Spock Cafe. Yeah, I know it, but... But nothing. Just stick around and watch. What's the name of 
Clark's henchman. He's what? The only one I know is Dizzy, a big guy with a flat nose. Dizzy. Okay, Mr. Delaney, I'll show you how it's done. Listen, I won't be able to get in tonight. Can you carry on? Why, sure, honey. What are you up to? Are you romancing? Yes, in reverse. Thanks a lot. Play a record. So long, Dizzy. I'll see you later. Uh, could I trouble you for a match? Why, sure, sister. No trouble at all. Hey, you're new around here, ain't you? I just got in town. Is this place always this quiet? Well, yeah. Uh, they had a little fracas in here last night. Some bad publicity. If you're wanting to do it to town, I know some gay spots. Oh, I don't usually go out with strange men, but... I'm a dependable type. Let's go. Well, there's a catch to it. We'll have to go in my car, and I have a flat tire. Listen, what I don't know about tire... I'll change it for you. That flat tire, baby. Oh, it's right behind you. Hey, what are you doing? What? What are you giving me? What are you doing? Start talking, is he? Why should I talk? Why don't you get authority, Mr. Wise Guy? I got enough authority to take you down to the federal building. The government just commissioned me, and I... are you a Fed? Wait a minute. Let me make a deal. I thought I seen you down at the spot. I told the boys you guys had come snooping around. What are you going to hold me for? For the murder of Marty Clark, maybe. I had nothing to do with that. I was Marty's friend. Wait a minute. You ain't fooling me. You guys ain't interested in a little two-bit murder case. How about making that deal? I'll sing. I'll sing plenty. All I ask is a chance to get out of town. Go ahead and sing. That rubber. Those frozen tires at John J. Underwood's. It's all down in that old brewery on Front Street where that cop got dumped. How do you know? How do I don't want to know. I was there. No matter what you say, I'm not going to let you go to that place alone. Do we have to go through that again? There's no danger and you can't help me. You'll only be in the way. Look, honey, if I see one thing out of line, I'll call the cops quick. Will you promise to do that? Sure. Pull up by that drugstore and let me take the car. Look, honey, stay right here until I come for you. Have a soda or something. Whatever you do, stay under the bright lights. All right. Police headquarters, please. Detective Division, Lieutenant Decker speaking. Yeah? What? And he's gone down to that place on Front Street alone. I'm frightened, Lieutenant. Well, you have every right to be. Delaney's crazy if he thinks he can crack this thing alone. That voice. Oh, Eddie.
driver. Lady, this is a hack, not a P-38. doing here we've been watching this place ever since your old man was killed what are you doing here look bill i think i've cracked that case and a lot more you have yeah come in you see that tires they were frozen but they're hot now yeah. there's a fortune here makes bootlegging booze look like a kid's marble game got the whole thing figured out bill underwood tried to move the rubber so he could sell it at the black market or somewhere Marty hijacked him. Underwood came to me because he couldn't go to the cops. He must have rubbed Marty out. And he got it too, and so did Marty's girl. That was probably done by some of Clark's boys in revenge. Sounds pretty good, Eddie. Good is perfect. My old man caught him moving the stuff and they drilled him. Look, Bill, all you have to do is to stake some men out here. Whoever's behind the whole thing has got to come back here to get the rubber moving. Looks like he hit us. There's only one thing that bothers me. How Underwood dared to move the stuff? He must have it in with somebody higher up. That figures, doesn't it? Are there any other marks in these crates? I don't know. I was just looking them over when I heard you coming. Eddie, look out! saw a chance to get back at Marty for hijacking your partner's rubber. You tried to pin it on me. You called Linda and ordered that phony blackout. Then you came back through Marty's office and plugged him. Now, wait a minute, Delaney. Maybe we can pick something up here. Why, you... Drop that gun, Delaney. Just the kind of pals I'd expect of a crooked cop. Shut up, you. Put him in a car. Let's get going. Wait a minute, Decker. She had nothing to do with it. Oh, no. She's going to forget the whole thing. Get going. Don't leave that door. McAvoy speaking. Turn on the riot call. Front Street Brewery. Credit 
notice for the breaking of the case was given by police and federal agents to E.J. Delaney, local private detective, now a commissioned officer in the United States Army, who at the same time avenged the gangland murder of his father, Timothy Delaney, veteran police officer killed Thursday. Number, please. Play no one else but you. Thank you. What? Wow! Get a load of the man. You're gonna see me off, we better get going. My train leaves in 20 minutes and I've gotta pick up my uniform. What? Ain't she going? I mean, you gotta let him get away? Well, we talked the whole thing over and decided to wait. Eddie thought it would tie me down to have a husband in the service. Hey, it was you. Linda thought it'd be too much responsibility for me to face a new job with a wife waiting back home. Well, of all the dopes, you thought, she thought, this is no time to put a romance like yours in cold storage. Go on, go with him. There must be a preacher in Washington. What do you say, Linda? It's a military secret, but I'll tell you on the train. Well, come on, then. Bye, Billy. Goodbye, honey, goodbye. Your number, please. Listen, sister, I dropped in a nickel and I want to hear Down Mexico Way. Oh, yeah? Well, never mind what you want. You're going to hear the wedding march.